Did you ever have an imaginary friend though? I didn't have like real ones. Okay, so if we're gonna talk about kids media, Foster's home for imaginary friends. Like I internalized those as my imaginary friends. Oh, the characters in the show you believed were your friends. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, almost worse, I would say. (laughs) (laughs) No tea, no shade. That's that's weird. I like that. Manic. Jumpscare. Hosted by Quinn Murphy and Becca Hobart. Hi. Hi. We're Quinn. We're Quinn. And, and we're, we're back. back. <laughs> and welcome to Manic Pixie Jumpscare, a podcast where we talk openly about our shared delusions, passions, and, and love, love for, for each, each other. other. Oh my gosh, Becca, episode two. We did it. They let us we're come here. back. <laughs> they being they, us they. We, we are the production arm behind this entire podcast um we're so strong and brave but yeah um the reviews are already coming in of the first podcast uh, the first episode i should say so I've and heard. it's a smash i gotta say i gotta oh say my god i, I can't say. believe tmg is considering <laughs> it's crazy Guys, so becca had a really good point today we are going to be like the gay podcast on TMG one day. That's our first kind of foray into fame. It has to be. And I can't say the deeper plan that we have going on behind that. But just no. know something about me and Becca is we're always plotting. And yeah. something about us as well is we're always plotting together. I want you all to know in the lore of... So Becca and I have our own individual lore. We have our relationships lore, which not to give away the theme of the episode, but we're getting into that today. Mm-hmm. And now there's the podcast lore. And so something that's interesting about me and Becca, when we had our first creative meeting about this podcast, about a week ago, I'm going to pull the curtain back. (laughs) Around seven days ago. Seven days ago, really. Um, Becca and I put in the like founding document, the constitution of Manic Pixie Jump Scare on Google Drive, if you will. There will be no call your dad, call her daddy and each other. Excuse me. No, we can't. No, we can't. We can't can't. call her daddy each other. We can't and we won't. Um, And so, yeah. And the fun thing about Becca is Becca and I are both in a pursuit to be famous. That's one of our end goals. And we'll, we'll kind of talk about that more as the podcast unravels and stuff like that. But Mm -hmm. It'll be like, like having this podcast is a great way because first of all, people get famous off of podcasts. So like that's- Nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. In this day and age? In the- yeah. yeah. In these times. In yeah, these they times, do. In these dark times. Yeah. Um, people get famous off podcasts. We're, so having a podcast like together means that if one of us gets famous, we can like pull the other one up. Yeah. By the bootstraps. <laughs> yeah. And we can say, <laughs> we can say like- I. I to like our managers, our agents, whoever we have, I have a podcast. I'm a podcaster. My creative partner. And my, that's my, my creative wife. partner and my life partner as well. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. The person I choose to live my life with. <laughs> um, Platonic soulmates. Yeah. Um, so that's something really exciting about the podcast. Yeah. Just had to tell you all our business plan, but yeah. there's no way I don't see it not working out. Yeah, no. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> we have a fail proof plan. <laughs> I've lived a thousand universes where we start this podcast and in every single one, it works out. (laughs) So yeah, kind of exciting. (laughs) So what are we, what are we catching up about today, Becca? Today, we're going to catch up about the media we've been consuming over the past few weeks. Um, Because the question we will ask a lot on this podcast is, what hobbies do you have outside of media consumption? <laughs> yeah. Most of our conversations are like, did you see this? Did you see this? Did you see this? And Quinn, I know you're itching to talk about what mm-hmm. you've most recently seen. Mm-hmm. So why don't you go? Well, Becca and I Becca and I have both had a little bit of an obsession with the Netflix series Heartstopper. But um <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> bum bum like the SVU. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. And I I found it um what am I like thinking of? I haven't been able to like get it out of my head since I haven't been affected by a piece of media like this in a while. 
So I had kind of heard about it. If you don't know Heartstopper, it's a um, it's a show on Netflix. It's literally like the biggest show on Netflix. Like it feels like every show they release on Netflix breaks records, but also Netflix doesn't ever release anything about like how their shows do. Um, and so they're always like, oh my God, this show broke records. And it's like, well, every show breaks records, it seems, except for yeah. the ones you aren't invested in. Anyway. Um, Netflix. A skepticism of corporations is something you will find on this podcast as well. Yeah, um, every single day. But I I just haven't been able to get it out of my mind, really. So it follows um, this relationship between these two boys who go to an all boys school in the UK. Um, one of them is gay. One of them is straight. They're basically in like homeroom together, but they don't call it homeroom because they're British. Um, and so they sat next to each other in homeroom, right? Um, uh, first form or whatever. Um, and they, oh. um, one of them's gay. One of them is like straight, or at least we're read, led to believe there's Nick or Nick is the straight one, but like there's, is his name? No, the actor's name is Joe. Well, I don't remember the kid. What, what's the main guy's name? Charlie? Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. Charlie is the main character and he's like kind of the nerdy, like gay kid. Um, and then Nick Nelson is like the rugby, he's like the star rugby player, like most popular boy in school, like very much that kind of energy. And so he's a year, a year older, right? He's a year older. Yeah. He's in a year above Charlie. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, but they form a friendship and there will be, there will be spoilers ahead, but it's been out for a while now. And so. It's on what's you. Your if posi- you haven't- what's your position on spoilers, Becca? Because I honestly feel like if it's out, you, you better cannot, watch it. You cannot responsibly place the onus on another person not to spoil something for you. No, yeah. I feel like unless like it's you're tricking me and you're like, this won't have spoilers, and then you say something that is, you know, gonna ruin A spoiler. it. Yeah. Then that's the only time where I'm it bothers me. But no. Also, something about me. I have such a little pea brain. I'll mm-hmm. forget. <laughs> if you tell me a spoiler, there's no way I'm remembering. Like if it's something I care about, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like it's it's annoying because um as someone who like looks at stuff on the internet, like something about me, I love my Google cards. Like when I open like the Google Chrome app on my phone, I love going through what stories the algorithm has recommended me. And so like Wait, several- I don't even know what are google cards they're like little like cards on it was in google chrome or like the google app itself where they'll just recommend you stuff based on what you like look up like recommend you shows no like articles like websites like all this different stuff Mm. and so like okay. anything you look up it's like suggesting me websites like oh you should look at this oh you should look at this and I love them they are oh. like it's black beer it's scary a little bit but like it gives me something because I try not to be it's another form of social media for me truly like it's something I can scroll and it's made for me and it's mm. lovely honestly yeah but something I'm a big another piece of Quinn lore I'm a huge Survivor fan I'm a huge fan of the show Survivor um And, like, multiple times this season and last season, it is spoiled for me who has, like, been eliminated because, like, Entertainment Weekly has, like, weekly um, interviews with the people who are, like, uh, like, voted off. And they can't speak to, like, media until they get voted off, basically. Okay, that's annoying. Yeah, and so, like, stuff like that happens where it's, like, a little bit more annoying. But, like, honestly, for stuff I'm never watching, like, I forget. Somebody was, like, Can, do you mind with spoilers? And it was, like, a show I had no intention to watch ever. And I'm so, I'm, like, I Oh, care. I love that. I love when so I, I don't want to watch something and it gets completely summarized for me. <laughs> and someone explains it for me, yeah. That's the best, yeah. So, yeah. So, we're going to spoil Heart Suppers, that whole. And that's our policy on spoilers that we're establishing in episode two. Yeah, going <laughs> um, forward. So spoilers policy is an episode two for all you future (laughs) um, MPJ historians out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mark that Um, down. Write that down. And so, yeah, I think one of the reasons Heartstopper was kind of stuck with me is because I find it very uncanny how it really mirrored my own high school experience. 
Mm-hmm. As I talked about in the last episode, I had to wear like that dress code to school. We didn't all wear the same ones. Um, and uniform culture in the UK is like much bigger. We're like, I feel like we're starting to get it in the States a little bit more, not to like the extent they have over in the UK, but like, but like mine, my, my school uniform was basically hard stopper, only it wasn't like as coordinated. Mm. Like there was like a little bit more freedom. Um, but like even down to the clothing, like it was weird. Like I I had a super close relationship because like obviously Nick and Charlie kind of start as close friends and then yeah. their relationship buds into something a little bit more. And that mm-hmm. was very much the story of my first romantic relationship. Um, it kind of bud out of like a really close friendship I had. Um, mm-hmm. And so mine was, I'll say, I got to say, a little bit more dramatically interesting than Heartstoppers, if I can say. Um, Be brave. There, there were more. There were more. There were more beats in my story. I'll say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There okay. were like rejections, and there were uh, there was a bunch of stuff before we finally got to like you know mm-hmm. the moment at the party where Nick and Charlie are kissing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um. So I think that's truly why it was like stuck in my head. Um. And so yeah, Becca, would you? What? What do you? What are your high level thoughts on? Well. I'm so interested that it was originally a graphic novel, I believe, which is like, I just love that. I don't know. And that's where the leaves come from, I presume. Like, yeah, there's they like the, yeah, the if image you haven't of seen like, the show. It's like very graphic. Yeah. There's like cartoon leaves that show like mm. the emotion of love. And it's so cute. And at first I was like, so who is that? That was weird. <laughs> yeah. So that was weird. But, um, yeah, I think that's I love adaptations basically. Also, mm-hmm. Nick Nelson and this is a spoiler mm-hmm. has is a close second in my bisexual ranking because I do and I don't purposely do this, but I do find myself having a list of bisexuals that I like a power ranking of them that mm-hmm. I love slash yeah. want to be and I did really find myself by the end of the show having a lot of envy for Nick Nelson Uh huh. like not necessarily I don't know I just wanted to be him a little bit and he yeah. is a fictional he is a fictional little boy and I do <laughs> recognize that but uh-huh. I can't stop myself from feeling what I feel yeah. so I I appreciate you allowing me to speak my truth on the matter mm-hmm. as well because that does mean a lot to me and I think that's another I think it's another really powerful thing about the series and why it's resonating with so many people is because it has like with the um like Nick's storyline in particular it's very much he realizes that like he has a particular idea of himself like as like a jock and as like um like this kind of like you know boy next door kind of figure and Mm -hmm. that figure is not gay is not queer at all like usually um And so he has like this, like, of course, something that everybody has when they realize that they're queer, have like queer fascinations and stuff like that. Or I shouldn't say everybody, but most people um, is like a panic moment where they're like, oh, look, Um, it's really in the show. There's something they make it so sad with how they do it. But he does the am I gay quiz, which like every person has taken that. (laughs) yeah Uh, yeah and it's like so and he gets like 62 percent gay or something and he's like crying and i'm like this is so like there's it's it was so sad but it's simultaneously so funny because it's like am i gay quiz like it's like (laughs) it's so funny that like we all went through a stage in our lives where we were like especially as people who grew up with like access to the internet and stuff where we were like a quiz on the internet can tell me my sexuality this will deduce it can define it for me Yeah. yeah And also, I have to say, I was on the Orla Gartland wave far before um, the rest of the world. Now people are just figuring out about her with Art Stopper. Baby, baby, I've been streaming her for years. Why am I like this? Why am I like this? I had access to that song my first year of college, which was detrimental to my mental health. But whoa, yeah, so. Oh my god! Which why am I like this? Yeah, I am. I am a pioneer. Um, but go listen to Orla Gartland. She's great. She's an Irish girl, and her song "Why Am I Like This" play is like behind as he has like his first queer panic. Um, but it's cool because he realizes that like he isn't like, which I feel like they don't like. I feel like they don't. 
this was one of the things that like I feel like his attraction to women wasn't like super explicit in the show um mm-hmm. which like I get because it was like a romance so like they didn't want him having like another like another love it, they didn't want it to be like a love triangle kind of thing but yeah. it was kind of weird because he just had like a thing for Kira Knightley and Pirates of the Caribbean and so he's like I'm bisexual yeah <laughs> um, I mean <laughs> she'll do it for you but I mean they he does like mention when they were younger and he kissed that other girl that he like loved her yeah. in that moment like he mm-hmm. knew that that kid and then she was like well that's when i realized i was a lesbian that's what things made me lesbian. Oh <laughs> and he was gosh. like okay okay that's, that must be a crazy thing to hear that must be a really <laughs> crazy thing to hear um yeah. um and yeah i yeah and so but like showing him like realize that he doesn't have to be like you know binary gay and also mm-hmm. having like there wasn't any like they didn't really do like the typical kind of like bi erasure either like mm-hmm. I feel like or in the characters at least like there wasn't anybody being like oh do bisexuals even exist because it's like yeah how many times have we heard that but it's like people being like you know it was nice because it wasn't even like even though okay I hated the character Tao um yeah I found him so annoying so annoying the only time oh I liked God. him was when he was telling off the the um Harry the I other never drop. liked it he was so annoying he was so annoying putting himself in his friend's business I'm like mind your own business literally and especially as a straight person I don't care if you have a crush on a doll let's say yeah it. let's let's speak it because <laughs> he has a try he has a crush he clearly has like a thing for um the trans girl on the show um Mm -hmm. l and so like that doesn't make you like okay you can be trans amorous and not be annoying like that's a fine thing to be um and so but i found him so annoying but i also really liked thinking about it now how his skepticism of nick was ultimately about his not, him not wanting his friend charlie to be hurt versus him being like oh well he's not actually bisexual bisexuality doesn't exist like that kind of thing because i could have seen like if this was made like if this show was made like five ten years ago i could see him being like were well, people even bisexual like why is he being bisexual like can he just be gay for you and stuff like that versus yeah. now where he's like i don't want this person to hurt you yeah they definitely would have pulled that a few years ago yeah very good much. thing we didn't let them mm-hmm Nice yeah time. and I think I think that's another I think that's another big thing about the show is it's like it feels like good kind of quality representation of a lot of different types of queer people yeah because like obviously it centers around like white like a white man like <laughs> gay man relationship we'll say um yeah but um it's really nice because like the model relationship in the show is like an interracial kind of lesbian couple, Mm -hmm. which is nice. And it's also, they have a nuanced relationship because they're also kind of, even though they're like already in like an established relationship, we see them go through a thing of like being a little bit more covert about things versus like coming out and being like, Oh, we're in a relationship. And they also go to an all girls school. So it's complicated by that, but their relationship is still seen by like Charlie and Nick is like, Oh, that's what we can be yeah and like isn't that cool and then there's Mm -hmm. also like some cool stuff about like you know somebody who doesn't necessarily identify as queer and Tao being interested in like Elle who is a trans woman and so like there's obviously like in representations of trans people in media there's always like a weird thing about like am I really straight if I like trans women or stuff like that and so Mm -hmm. you know people who are for some reason tied to straightness as a label very interesting yeah no I also like that all the actors are like actually high schoolers Mm -hmm. like that is so yeah like they're very like they're 18 yeah hard to do things like labor laws and stuff like that but they are really close to the ages they play and it's really nice because this is it's nice because not in like a sex negative way at all um because I find myself to be like a kind of sex positive person, but, and a lot of people in queer communities are sex negative and we need to talk about that. But Mm -hmm. I enjoyed the fact that the show wasn't like so overtly sexual. There are very like overtly sexual parts of queer culture. Mm -hmm. Um, But this doesn't necessarily have to be that. And I think it's nice that like, you know, a 10 year old can watch the show and like, there's nothing like 
super scandalizing. Like they kiss and like the kissing scenes are like passionate and like they make you feel something, but it's not like they're like, uh, like not like that, which is like nice. And like, yeah, it's like they're in high school. So like, it's not like euphoria. <laughs> it's not like the kids at euphoria high who are like hooking up between math and reading. true true but okay like- but <laughs> when we get to the episode where we talk about our high school experiences my high school experience is eerily similar to euphoria and <laughs> that's a whole thing maybe oh that's just God. me but yeah yeah you know, anyway. and also i i think so it's hard because another thing that i thought about I want to get your take on as like a creative person who like wants to make things about like the Mm -hmm. queer experience and stuff like that is it sucks that I have this mindset as somebody who like wants to create art like this when I watched the show and when it kind of mirrored my experience a lot and stuff I've written I kind of felt almost like oh man somebody beat me to it a little bit because I feel like there's almost this like scarcity mindset that like because something like Heartstopper exists, that something else like it can't like exist in the future, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, I know where. Okay. So I also sometimes feel that. And I try. I think that's. There's like the amount of straight people stories we've heard that are just exactly the same. Like, if anything, every queer story that's told is going to have way more like nuance and like something, something interesting to say more than like another straight like another like straight rom-com or whatever you know yeah. chances are and that was, just like that probability was, wise and like I had like that monkey brain thought of like uh down this means I can't make something like this and I'm like well why can't I there's so yeah. many like straight there are so many like straight movies that are like the same thing over and over again like recycled but it sucks Literally. that like as like artists who want to make stuff like that that we feel like we even have to like think like that like that there is like the scarcity mindset that like there can only be one heart stopper yeah there can only be you know but yeah I'm glad that it exists and I'm really glad that um I got to watch it but I'm really excited to do a rewatch um and yeah I had like another thing I was thinking of but yeah. I know that you know, it just got renewed was... for two more seasons. So I'm very excited. <gasps> I didn't know that. Yay. Yeah. Um, I was thinking about it though. And I was like, what other male bisexual representation is there? Mm-hmm. And literally the first thing that came to mind other than Nick Nelson is um, Jay from Big Mouth. Mm-hmm. Also a Netflix production. Yeah. So I would like to take a brief moment to thank Netflix with their <laughs> tanking sales. Literally. They're still making stories about just like go of like males. Also, <laughs> also fully has like tr- so like transphobic stuff on the it's true. Yeah. Like, yeah, Netflix is very interesting because like I don't know, has somebody like the people I listen to because like on the internet are like because Netflix just also sent out a memo being like if you don't like the content we're producing, like you can kind of like shove off or find somewhere else to work. And it was mostly about like Dave Chappelle. Mm. Um, and uh, it is really interesting because like, I feel like the the narrative is that like Netflix is like, how can Netflix like allow to put something like this on their platform? But also on the same platform that like The Closer is on, which is Dave Chappelle's comedy special, in which he says, I'm team turf or trans inclusionary radical feminist. <laughs> um uh there's also Heartstopper, which is like this amazing like thing and so yeah I don't, I don't quite know what I think about all that yet but it's it's like an interesting thing that I feel like people don't talk about with like the conversation and stuff yeah the duality of Netflix <laughs> yeah um I also thought it was interesting a lot of people I thought this was interesting where some people feel that there wasn't like enough pain in Heartstopper like I, I saw that and then I also saw that some people were like struggling to watch the series because it was so like divorced from their reality that it made them feel like even worse about like their high school experience because like okay <laughs> okay because like <laughs> okay there, there are like it's tough because um obviously like queer people it's been talked about like in you know stuff 
<laughs> multiple things <laughs> so, that queer people have like a different sense of time and that like often queer people kind of experience like a delayed adolescence almost because yeah. they don't get to experience adolescence in the same way as like their heterosexual counterparts mm-hmm. and so some people like I saw a TikTok that was like I can't watch Heartstoppers because like it gives me like it's like painful for me as somebody who didn't get to have that experience and so I was wondering obviously I've talked about how I had that kind of experience and I am lucky in that like I felt like I had like a relatively normal adolescence. Um, And so I was wondering if you had any thoughts about that. So that's interesting. Um, So (laughs) I may be realizing things live on the pod. (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. So I know I I mean, I didn't find it painful to watch at all, but Mm -hmm. I definitely I think it's not even like in conjunction with my queerness, but like just never having ever been in a a relationship like Mm -hmm. even a straight one or a straight appearing one Mm -hmm. um I mean it it's if I was like if I was gonna be hurt by that every single I would be like crying every day you know like I it's just unavoidable that like romantic love exists and I Mm -hmm. like have not experienced it yet but I'm not I'm like past a place of that being like I can't watch it or anything like Mm -hmm. no I can recognize that like first of all it was great like great um what do I want to say it was such a nice like creative project so Mm -hmm. I watched it like as someone who is like admiring the work that was done and also being able to like still enjoy the story there without like yeah but um, that's interesting about the delayed adolescence. And maybe yeah. I'll journal about that later in the AM. Yeah, I thought it was interesting as somebody who like had the experience to be like, oh, that's something that people are like encountering this with. Yeah. And also on like the pain note, I feel like I feel like there were like a lot of painful moments of the show. And like, yeah, wait, like, first of all, like, oh, my God, they get like, like beaten up multiple times. <laughs> yeah, like literally. <laughs> like that's not gets, enough they get like charlie gets called like a slur behind his back okay like, yeah <laughs> I think that's fine and like he also good. like like there was something so sad about every time charlie would say like i'm sorry like after yeah. they called like I, and, ever, and as somebody who, like as somebody who feels has like felt at so many times during my life that i've had to like apologize for my existence um like i big like, related so viscerally to that <laughs> um and like that's a that's like a painful thing and so yeah. like I like the p- fact that people like I'm like what do you want them to do die at the end like that, uh, seriously like and it's it's so it's it's like such a trope that like like queer stories don't have to end in like pain anymore um, yeah sure and it's like a weird thing especially as somebody who like has done a lot of research on like the AIDS crisis and specifically like the media that came out of like the U.S. HIV and AIDS crisis like I think we have enough stories about like queer pain and we'll continue to tell them because it's like an important thing, but Mm -hmm. not all of them have to like focus on our pain. Yeah. Um, Especially about like the youth and like, you know, mm -hmm. it's good to generate hope. These 16 year olds are not (laughs) suffering enough for me. (laughs) Yeah. I need them to be a little more miserable. Maybe. Imagine going on Al Gore's internet (laughs) and typing that out. (laughs) Not Al Gore's internet. (laughs) Oh, anyway God. yeah but yeah we love hard stoppers we're excited very much um so becca do you have any other media you've been consuming that you're really itching to talk about well quinn thank you so much for asking so <laughs> i did um mention last podcast that i did watch a lot of disney movies again and i did want to quickly bring up that um i remember watching smart house <laughs> on oh. disney channel as it came out not came out because it came out probably in the 90s but yeah. When I was young. And mm. I remember being like, this is the most advanced movies we'll ever get. This is crazy mm-hmm. technology <laughs> that I'm witnessing <laughs> in front of my eyes. Uh, so rewatching it, guys, I was scared because it is truly terrifying. First of all, the plot is is it, it's horrifying. Yeah. Their house comes to life as a woman and yeah. then attacks them. And also the the movie magic CGI. I mean, no hate to, you know, the makers of this movie. I know you're probably watching the podcast right now. I do want to say I respect what you did at the time. But now looking back, it is it, it's really bad. Yeah. And it was hard to watch, but I did enjoy my watch 
either way because it had a great cast that one dad mm-hmm. who's like hot and he's in everything in the 90s i don't know his name but yeah um i also wanted to bring up wait on way. smart house oh yeah yeah not a movie you can watch high first of all no too scary yeah like you'd get too freaked scary. out yeah you get spooked um and then <laughs> what was i thinking about smart house no it was one of those movies that i like remember <gasps> do you know what movie really disturbed me as a child that was like a, de- a decom what? i actually don't know if it was decom or if it was something else but it was called don't look under the bed oh my god and wait. it was about boogeyman and like how i don't a- think that was disney but they played it on disney okay. um and it was about like boogie people i guess i should say and about <laughs> how when you're when you have imaginary friends that they're real and when you stop believing in them they become boogeymen that live under your bed did you ever have an imaginary friend though i didn't have like real ones okay so if we're going to talk about kids media Foster's home for imaginary friends. Like I internalize those as my imaginary friends. Oh, the characters in the show you believed were your friends. Okay, that's uh, almost worse, I would say. (laughs) (laughs) No tea, no shade. That's that's weird. I like that. That's cool. If my kid was like, well, you know, in this type of I was like a poser when I was younger. Like I was like, I told people too that like they were my friends. Like I would like. I remember I drew a picture of like Coco, the like kind of bird one with like the oh palm my, tree head. Oh my god! And I was like, this is this is my imaginary friend Coco. <laughs> wow, that's that's honestly so crazy. <laughs> okay, I just like don't really much like. Okay, and I'm gonna be brave and I'm gonna say this. Much like when people talk about getting amnesia, when people talk about imaginary friends, I don't really believe them. Hmm. I don't really believe amnesia happens and I don't really believe kids have imaginary friends. Mm. Okay. Like I've never met anyone who truly, truly believed that they had a little friend who was just like, you know, there. Yeah. I, I didn't, I don't know if I don't think imaginary friends necessarily necessitate um needing to like actually believe that they exist but I never believed that like they actually existed okay because I I feel like that is what makes it an imaginary friend because like Hmm. you can play by yourself and like imagine you know you're like playing pirates very much me very much yeah 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 it's that's what theater makers do (laughs) but that's literally our actor's job but the amount of time I spent my youth just walking around and like playing by myself like pretending it's spooky (laughs) no but like i can so in my in my you know the grown-up version of this where you pretend you're on a late night talk show yeah like i can Mm -hmm. i can imagine jimmy kimmel sitting across from me he's not an imaginary friend because i know he's not real Mm -hmm. i think what the imaginary friend thing is is like you truly believe they're real and i've met people who are haunted and they don't have they don't do that but that's another episode Wait, who don't do the talk show thing, do you mean? Like they don't they've never had an imaginary friend or um, you know, they don't or they don't do the talk show thing, but they are haunted, but that's you know. Um yes, but it's kind of like believing in Santa in a way. A little bit. A little bit. I was I was a Santa believer for a very long time. I honestly can tell you I don't ever remember believing in him. Something about me is I want to believe so badly. I'm <laughs> I'm constant. It's my leaper moon. I'm mm-hmm. constantly caught between like a. I have a very much. It might, it might also be like the two faced of Gemini, but I have a very like spiritual like want to believe side of myself, and then I have mm-hmm. a completely logical like there's yeah. no way that exists side of myself. Yeah, I and like when it came well. to Santa, my spiritual side was like. <laughs> fighting <True. laughs> fighting yeah like my logical side but yeah I have been also back in my bookworm era yes and I'll get into this a little bit more later in the pod but I read what I think is my favorite piece of fiction I've read in my adult life <gasps> oh my gosh um this book I don't know if you I don't know I'll give it a plug on the pod it's called love hate and clickbait slay um and I bought it from my local bookstore brag um from 
like just on like a whim because like it's another book about like queer people it's it's actually really funny it's like a political satire it's queer people and so it was like right up my alley um it's about this presidential campaign that's not even a campaign yet they're like there's a governor who's gonna run for um office but she's not like it's like the pre-campaign basically so they're like making fun of like the campaign cycle already and so she makes like a homophobic gaffe and um then these two staffers in her um office get photographed and it makes them look like they're kissing which they weren't they were actually in a very heated like argument moment um and so then once those photos go public they decide to like run with it for the campaign and so they have to pretend like they're dating despite the fact that one of them has only dated women <laughs> Ooh. and so it, they have like this whole fake relationship and then not to spoil but throughout the course of the book it hey the the lines are blurred but it's it was like yeah. I, I was transported because I started it one night. I read like the first 80 pages or whatever. And then I was like, oh, this is good. I'll stick with it. And then the next day I started reading. And I just didn't stop until I was finished. Like it was like oh. I read and it's like a 300 and like 25 page book, I think. And so like I read like the rest of it, like all in one day God. because I was so like, like, I don't remember the last time I literally just, like, it's probably because I just graduated college, too, but, like, I don't remember the last time I, had like, had the space to, like, sit and just, like, read. Read. And just get lost in a in a little tale that was being we- webbed, weaved. Weaved right before my eyes. Yeah. Um, wow. But yeah. Is that something other? The last time that I, like, needed to finish a book right mm-hmm. on the spot was I was reading Divergent between the PSSAs, which is Pennsylvania Standardized Testing in eighth grade. I had just read the kissing scene and I was like, oh my God, I need these two people to fuck right now and I need to read about it. Eighth grade? When was Divergent like a thing? So the movie came out in eighth grade. I watched it after, well, so my eighth grade. So you were in seventh grade. Oh, okay. As you may remember. Yeah. Becca yeah, is famously, yeah, yeah. Becca was a year ahead of me in school. Yeah, this is true. But we graduated but at the same time. At the same time, yeah. And College, I graduated on time. Quinn graduated <laughs> early. I graduated on time. Let me clarify that. <laughs> Let me clarify. No, no shame to people who take a little bit more yeah. than four years to graduate. Yeah. In oh, fact, it's most time. people. That's what they don't tell you. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah. So true. Um, college is fucking hard. Let's say it. It's so hard. <laughs> I'm going to say something that not a lot of people have said. <laughs> um, Speak on it. Um, yeah i remember i saw divergent with my grandmother randomly oh okay did she enjoy it i think so i remember it but i don't know i don't know did you read the other two books i did but i don't really remember them as much i for whatever reason i read divergent and like obviously it's like in the whole like ya dystopian future that -hmm. was like so now like any novel about like a dystopian future i could not possibly be interested like, I yeah. feel like our whole, like, adolescence was so saturated with those tales that, like, nobody it. can do anything that interests me anymore. Yeah. But anyway, Divergent, I remember being, like, really into it, even though it was kind of similar to Hunger Games, ultimately. But then I tried to read, like, the second book, never got into it. <laughs> I, no, they, okay. Hunger Games Catching Fire, the film, mm. crazy. One of the best movies. But that. Yeah, all the other dystopian series just went down. And Hunger first. Games, and Hunger Games, I will say, I read it over winter break, my first year of college. They hold up. And Ooh. that was like still when Trump was president. And so, like, reading them during the Trump era was like dark kind of scary. Times. It was dark. Yeah. But Suzanne Collins really like did the thing with those. Like, she, wow. she really. Did we read them? No, they're good. They're good reread as an adult. Like it's it's kind of crazy what she did, and the fact that I was reading that in fifth grade, like so much of it went over my head. I often think about how I read the entire Twilight series between third and fourth grade. There is no way I don't have like irreversible brain damage from that. Yeah, I yeah, that's something crazy. This is another podcast. This is another episode we're gonna do, but. We're going to do a whole like episode on formative media because like Mm -hmm. I truly think something people aren't talking about 
is like I like I ultimately like how my parents like parented me Mm -hmm. however sometimes I think that like I should have like my media digest when I was a child should have been monitored a little bit more oh oh yeah I know that about myself the fact that I was up on what was going on at Degrassi High at like 11 12 years old that couldn't have been good for me Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. or like reading like reading like dystopian authoritarian like okay world in which they kill the children like oh yeah yeah, yeah. when I was in fifth grade like that couldn't have been great for me either oh god but I also felt like so far away from the world in which we lived in at the time yeah at the time it still (laughs) does but like it's like mm. (laughs) yeah you know um so we're gonna throw to a break real quick and then we're gonna get to the main topic of today's episode oh my god (laughs) oh my god guys i'm scared okay welcome back from our short little sexy break that was so good so um as builders of this lore that Uh these viewers you know are going to be so invested in for the rest of their lives um it's really important to know how quinn and becca became becca and quinn yeah (laughs) i like that i like that a lot (laughs) thank you so much um so this is the story of us (gasps) so famously quinn you might remember that we did meet Uh during college i was a sophomore and you were just a little freshman yeah and we met do you want to say together in directing, directing one. one which was a class um at the university of pittsburgh for theater yeah. majors mm-hmm. or and, or or not majors or anyone actually <laughs> <laughs> anyone they who let, take an intro to performance yeah yeah could learn how to be a director um yeah. and the class was really enjoyable actually but parts of it <laughs> We sat kind of far from everyone else. Yeah, it was. Well, there were like two sections almost. There were. So we were in the Henry Heyman Theater at the University of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. So it's a thrust stage. And for those of you not in the know, um, a thrust stage is like your typical stage. But um, there's seating on three sides. So it's not like your typical stage. <laughs> I don't know why yeah. I said that. But um, <laughs> there's seatings on three sides. So like, yeah. Um, so there's kind of like a little, like almost like a staple if you pull the legs out. Like it's like that, but around the stage. Um, I don't know why that, that's the metaphor I picked. That was crazy. Yeah, what <laughs> Truly a crazy thing I reached for. <laughs> um, and cut. so... Yeah, if you're having trouble visualizing, just look up thrust stage. Um, you yeah. can go right now, pause the episode, and then just come back right away. Um, Google that. Google that. Take a hall pass. Um, and then um, so but in the middle section, um, we would sit like when we came into class, people would sit like on one side or like the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and there were very few people in the middle, but usually we would just end up sitting in a floor, sitting in like a circle around like the floor, which is criminal. Because our professor was very much like Cindy, who we love. Yeah, we love. But don't mm-hmm. make us sit on the floor. That's crazy. I feel like we are united in our stance against floor sitting. Yeah, it's bad. Something that I need is back support. Always. And something that I interestingly don't have in my current setup for this podcast. Back support. Back support. I know. Because Tough. if I lean all the way back, this is me now. <laughs> I'm so comfy, but you can't see me. You can't see me. My, my chair, the hasback support was a little too squeaky. So I didn't want to put that on you guys. Um, no, I don't want to risk it. And so, yeah. Um, Becca, what made you take directing one? I thought that was like an interesting question as I was thinking that is back. Interesting. So I don't super remember my motivation. I think I just like, I, I like tried acting and I was like, I guess I should also learn like a little bit about the process of directing if I want to like work with directors as an actor. And then actually it turned out to be like one of the main things I did um, at the rest of college. Yeah. I guess sort of after this class, which was again, fun sometimes and also not fun. A lot of it was mostly fun. It was mostly fun. I don't want anybody to think we like regret taking the class. No, not at all. No, 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 no. It it was good. And, Mm -hmm. um, 
Quinn, why did you take it? Freshman year is kind of a big, that's a big class for freshman year. Yeah, I I was a little advanced coming into college, like mm-hmm. in terms of like theater and stuff. And I didn't quite know like the whole like track and stuff. So you had to take, so our like basic performance class at, um, in Pitt's Theater Arts Department was intro to performance. And so everybody had to take that, like every, it was required for every theater major, not just the ones who like wanted to do performance. Um, And you had to take that class before you took any of the upper level classes, but I didn't take um, intro to performance my first semester. And so then I couldn't take any of the upper level performance classes my second semester. And so then I was like, hmm. And I like, I did so like, I did so much theater throughout my life before college. And so I was like, do I really need an intro class? And so there was a system by which you could like test out. So I basically auditioned for like the head of performance. Mm -hmm. Um, And um, he let me just like pass over intro to performance. So I never ended up taking that class. Um, But, and so then I took both, I was encouraged by upperclassmen to take directing because directing was something I I had already had experience in. My high school theater had a very like robust um, theater program and my um, director, he was like, he came in my first year of high school. And so we kind of like started school together, which was kind of nice. But by my junior year and in my senior year, there was like a robust student like run theater company going. And so there was a musical my junior year that I was a part of that was completely student produced. Um, And then I got to direct a play, like a full length play my senior year of high school. Um, And so I already had like a lot of like directing or experience. And I had also like assistant directed um, throughout high school as well. Um, and so I just wanted to get some more kind of like technical background in that kind of stuff because it is something I'm interested in. Um, and so, yeah, that's why I took it. Yeah. And I feel like, so we did sort of bond there because of just literally where we sat. Um, and then we started sort of, I don't know, like, I would hear you have like a, do you have like a specific memory so I re- well I do remember um w- during like I don't even know circle time I guess you told a story about like you broke uh, I don't even know a blender or something mm-hmm. and you said as a Sagittarius that was well within my rights of like being chaotic and I was like oh I love Sagittarius people <laughs> and then I just feel like I like heard your British accent like every once in a while and like would also chime in um, but I feel like that's just like sitting near you was really just what sort of sprouted my interest in you. Yeah, I did on the blender story. My family got a magic bullet for Christmas and over winter break, like we maybe had it for a week before I broke it because I was trying to make a smoothie, but yeah. then I didn't put like, there's like a cap part that I didn't put on. And so I just poured the smoothie into like the electric part. Oh my God. Um, and so- <laughs> so bad um, yeah I like basically broke my family's magic bullet like right <laughs> after we got it and I didn't tell anybody about it really it just kind of broke and I was just like Put that um, back. who did <laughs> who did that <laughs> um what the dog doing um, what the dog doing I remember specifically there was one time where I was singing so like my first year of college has a very specific soundtrack I was getting into like I was really embracing my status as like a fan of pop music Mm. and so I was getting into like the more I was getting into very much the music I listen to now which is like Carly Rae Jepsen Charlie XCX you know all the girls basically yes and I remember I was I started singing a couple bars of the Charlie XCX song Porsche off of her critically acclaimed mixtape pop Two. yeah and Becca looked at me and she goes of course you like that song <laughs> No. But like not in a <laughs> no, not in a I didn't represent it very well, but like in a very celebratory way, like oh, of course you like that song. Like, okay, the, like good. very much like like very much not like dismissive at all. Okay. But yeah. And I like I was like, oh, because like I knew Becca was cool because like Becca, I'm gonna say, I feel again, oh comparison gosh. is the thief of joy. I will okay. keep saying that to myself. But like when I think about the differences between us. I feel you have like a coolness about you that I 
do not possess. I or always find pos- that so interesting. Or maybe we possess in that. different ways, but I just I just think of you as like the coolest person I know. Wow. Oh my God. Well, thank you so much. But I, sorry I don't to all know. the other cool people I know. Um, <laughs> nice try, everyone else. <laughs> nice try. That was awesome. But no, you were just like, because I, something about me, I'm the annoying person who like sits in the front of a class. And so I would, I would like sit in like the front row. It also had the most leg room and I'm, I'm mm. a lengthy girl. And so mm-hmm. um, it was nice for that reason. But Becca would sit like second, third row, like nonchalant. Chill. You had, you, you had your septum ring then, right? No, I didn't actually, but yeah, I did no. have my, my side nose ring. But like Becca has all these like cool piercings and like, you didn't have as many tattoos as you do now, but like. No. Some probably. It was, you definitely bu- had was your building. finger tattoo. You yeah, definitely have the tattoo. Becca has a tattoo yeah. on her finger that says For tattoo. For all our visual, yeah. Yeah. It looks so gnarly under that. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you're very, you're very turn off the light with your nails right now. Um, <laughs> and yeah, Becca also had like black hair, like jet black hair when I first met oh, her. Oh, I forgot that. Yeah. That's crazy when people like fully meet me with the black hair because I am yeah. naturally blonde. Yeah, which is so shocking to most people. And whenever I see blonde Becca, I'm like, I don't know that girl. Yeah, she's she's a different girl. She's I'll not my friend. <laughs> I she, maybe she would be, but I just haven't. I just don't know her like that yet. You've never known me blonde, which is crazy. No, I don't know the power that, you that holds. Oh, it's that is my most like fully formed me mm-hmm. for yeah. sure. So one day you will, but yeah. Um, and so yeah, Becca and I were just like besties by the end or not the end but we had like an interest in each other I would say but yeah and Becca I I remember I remember like it was like it's such an interesting thing in college in particular when you have like a class friend yeah like the phenomenon of a class friend is so interesting like somebody who you like talk to in class who you like enjoy you see them and you're like oh hey but like you don't ever like interact outside of classes for whatever reason Mm -hmm. and I remember Becca was like one of the first people who I was like okay I need to find a way to get this person to not just be like my class friend but be my like actual friend real friend yeah Yeah. like my actual friend who like has interest in me outside of this class that we're in together yeah yeah I remember like one time we like went to get food after class and I was like, yes, like, yes, done it. Happening. You're transitioning. Um, you definitely told you said, could I pull you for a chat? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, because I was yeah. going through my Love Island era. Yeah, we were I was both in Love that, Island. You yeah. were watching Love Island. I was watching Love Island Australia. That was definitely a bonding mm-hmm. moment. That yeah. wow, to think about how Love Island brought us together. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I was watching, I was watching a lot of Love Island then. Oh my God. Love Island working overtime. Bringing families together. Um, Literally. And yeah. And so, yeah. But then, so funny thing about that semester, we took <laughs> directing. Yeah. The world ended. It. Um, the apocalypse it. happened. Um, <laughs> and by that, I mean COVID-19, the pandemic yeah. really took hold. Um, and so we didn't get to finish the semester in person, but Becca and I definitely like kept in touch I would say yeah over the summer we like you know kept in touch a little bit then like by the time we were back but it was hard because if you guys don't remember like it was terrible like the thought of seeing people was terrifying it was horrifying yeah there was no like yeah we COVID was like the scariest thing ever there was no talk of vaccines so like even when we were back in the fall and we had like zoom classes we saw each other a few times. Yeah. Like, like outside. W- outside with masks on, like mm-hmm. fully. So sometimes I wonder, like, how were we friends? Yeah. We like, we kind of. <laughs> how did we maintain that? Like, we barely saw each other. Yeah. Like, we were, again, we were, like, I remember specifically that year, we were definitely in a class together the spring semester. Was it the history class though, mm-hmm. where I yeah, had we my were camera off? Together. Yeah, I had my camera off the entire time. I would say, but we would like talk about it and stuff. That is true. That's we definitely, definitely kept like a line of communication open. Yeah, but the yeah, so the spring was sort of mirrored the fall in that like it was still Zoom. Mm-hmm. We were like hanging out every once in a while. I think honestly, the vaccine is really what brought us together because mm-hmm. we were able to hang out openly. 
Yeah. I think also a big thing that like kind of brought us together is, or I don't know, because we were de- we were definitely like good friends before this, but do we like? Because obviously there was. <laughs> we're like this is the story of us. We don't really know why we're. <laughs> we friends. don't really know. Why <laughs> we don't friends. get it. I don't know. We just like kept like I don't know. Maybe it's just because we don't want to like, think on those times, but we definitely kept like the channel open, and we obviously oh i remember the thing we 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 need to talk about a big part of our friendship was your 21st birthday party this is true yeah okay that did that happen last summer yeah and also before the 21st was you me and you went to drive and drag (gasps) oh Oh, I this was a bonding moment because I it was forgot. probably the it was probably the first time we like went somewhere yeah like the two of us yeah yeah so that was yeah 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 that was a big moment that we, was a really fun night yeah it really was we saw someone who worked for pit theater there they will not be revealed someone who you someone who you and i would both go on to like develop like a pretty good relationship with who like yeah after so, this which is crazy so basically somebody in like the staff of our theater department was there and we like talked to somebody who was in their party like for a second and they like did not acknowledge that we were there no 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 but, like it we knew who they were crazy. but it was like weird it, it was yeah. very weird it was very it, weird you had to be there it was it was, it's like a weird thing we can't get into right now but yeah. um but yeah that was that was a really fun thing so driving yeah. drag was like during 2020 when you couldn't do like shows inside theaters or mm-hmm. it was 2021 by this point. Yeah, it was. Um, when you couldn't really do shows inside theaters, they did like outdoor, like drive-ins where you would like drive up. Oh my god! And I remember we were like, "Oh, do we like get on top of like my car?" <laughs> we, I immediately like... dented it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, and was, "Nice." And there was like for like for like a long time because I never like go to a car wash. Like there was just like you were wearing like those boots you have. <laughs> Oh like she no. was wearing like dolls kill like alien boots that have like the little tread on them and yeah. there was like her footprint on my car and I was like this is so funny oh no <laughs> I didn't know I was there for that long gotta mm-hmm. leave my mark as I do mm-hmm. yeah but so drive and drag was great mm-hmm. and then we had my 21st which was held at my apartment my humble abode mm-hmm. and it was camp themed and yeah. Quinn, of course, turned to look, as they do. Mm-hmm. And something that also bonded us here was, again, a Love Island moment, which yeah. me and my other single roommate played the Love Island kissing game on my birthday. Mm. So we did have all of our um, our guests. <laughs> we invited them to our home and then we said you're gonna make out with us we're gonna be blindfolded and we're gonna yeah. rank you in front of your face mm-hmm. how you did and most people did it i would say everyone who was single did it mm-hmm. and so me and macy kissed like probably like 15 or 20 people that night at least yeah <laughs> during um, <laughs> during covid <laughs> too, like but <laughs> It, like June of 2021 COVID like not yeah like, yeah you know. like everyone was really hyped up on the fact that like it, we were going crazy we were going yeah crazy. yeah yeah I we was were all like newly vaxxed and we were going crazy yeah yeah so forgive me and forgive me for the multiple times I've played since then but <laughs> the multiple really... people back and I've made kiss us <laughs> yeah seriously but me and Kent me and Ken sorry <laughs> not me and my like kid not, it's like you're not <laughs> even trying not me and my kin me and quinn kiss becca becky and kin <laughs> becky and kin quist um so we did we did make out i ranked quinn considerably high yeah i forget if you gave me it was either an eight an 8.5 or a nine or a 9.5 no i, I think like... it was an 8.5 are you sure i think if it were a 9.5 i would like know that are you sure it wasn't a nine? Because I feel like the Sagittarius, because me and Macy were also trying to kiss all the Zodiac signs that <gasps> summer. Yeah, that was a part of it. Yeah. And I feel like Sagittarius ended up with a nine. Maybe. Because there, there was no female Sagittarius. Maybe you gave me nine and Macy gave me eight and a half. Could be. I remember I ranked considerably higher than I thought I would. 
I had a little anxiety going into it. Oh my goodness. No, you did great. Mm-hmm. Um, not so the last then, time Beck and I made out either. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> Trust. If there's one thing me and <laughs> I keep wanting to say <laughs> kin. <laughs> me, me and my, my kin. kin <laughs> <laughs> me and my kin are gonna kiss okay <laughs> but no seriously guys incest is illegal especially in <laughs> pennsylvania so you better stop in a special way in the state of pennsylvania <laughs> yeah in delaware i don't know how y'all do in delaware but anyway um so we kissed at my birthday party mm-hmm. that was also just a really fun night we talked and and that was when i sort of planted the seed about the drag seed what kind of seed <laughs> <laughs> a drag seed um mm. which was the play i was directing in the fall of 2021 at school mm. and i did imagine quint be in the cast wasn't positive on the role as of yet but i was planting the seed that you know i really wanted them to be in the show and they were like i don't know what did you think of that at the time I thought it sounded really fun and like I didn't I hadn't done like a ton of research into the shows and stuff but I was like I was always assuming that I was just going to be in your show because it was directed by you and it was about drag queens and I had had like prior experience doing drag especially for like theater and stuff I've been in Hairspray the Musical starring as Edna Turnblad mm, three times um, (laughs) prior to doing the drag seat and so it was just something I assumed I was going to be in. Yeah, you were warmed up. <laughs> I was but warmed then, up. <laughs> I think then also is, or at least a little bit after the birthday party is when you brought up Kesha. <gasps> yeah. Which yeah. this is the moment. This is when our spirits aligned. And yeah, I, have I think no something happened. I think something happened yeah. here. Well, Kesha was after auditions, though. For drag scene. Really? Well, I guess we can tell that has context, but yeah, it was. I definitely think so. Or- okay, so you knew. Oh, wait, that is true because you knew you were going to be Connie. Yeah. Okay, so I guess w- we can, you know, talk about this fast, but mm-hmm. Quinn drag famously. Is honestly, one of the funnest nights I've had in my life. The callbacks, really? Yeah, the callbacks were so fun. Oh my god, I had Quinn um on stage for mm, two hours the entire callback. Oh session. yeah, oh like, just, yeah. I was like, yeah. let's just try Quinn with everyone, every single person. <laughs> yeah, I had to. So Quinn that... played the titular Connie Lingus in the drag <laughs> seat. <laughs> Say that real slow. Titular Con- Connie Lingus. <laughs> Connie Lingus. Mm-hmm. Um. And who is the mother of, spoiler alert, um, a killer. The actual titular. (laughs) A killer child who is Mm -hmm. um, a drag queen. Yeah. Um, But so you had auditioned. You got the role. Big surprise. Whoop, whoop. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Whatever. Um, Whatever. And then we take a bus down or we take an Uber. I was already drunk. Oh, yeah. So. Oh, well, I want to I want to get into this a little bit because yeah. I texted Becca because obviously my first concert ever was actually Kesha at the Delaware State Fair. Um, mm. And it was when Kesha was like huge, not that she's not huge now, but like when she was like, you know, like Kesha, Kesha yeah. um, at the height of her popularity. And so obviously I like wanted to revisit it as an adult, as somebody who loves Kesha's music, Justice for High Road. Um, Come on. And so <laughs> say that. Um, and so we, um, I texted Becca when I heard, and cause I was like, would you want to go to Kesha with me? And she was like, of course I would. And so we bought tickets. Um, and then it was like, the concert wasn't until a couple months later. And I remember, so doors were at like six or something and yeah. we wanted to get there pretty early. And I had a class that went till five fifteen, And so literally, I was like, we were meeting at like 5.30 to get an Uber to where, to the venue. I remember I, we read my, it was my playwriting class. We read my first play and like, like immediately I sign off the Zoom call. I'm immediately railing shots of tequila, not to make myself sound like an alcoholic, but like, so I can like make sure I'm in the proper headspace for this concert. Cause it was also hot. 
So I was yes, like, if it was I'm like not yeah, it was drunk, like September. Yeah. So I don't even remember. I think I just had like white claws, mm-hmm. and then I looked insane on the way when I walked from my apartment to your apartment. People sitting outside at restaurants at Mad Max did take photos of me. I'm just gonna say that as we as we talked about in the last <laughs> episode, Becca and I take some fashion risks, and yeah. so like yeah, <laughs> I was yeah. wearing like basically a Care Bear outfit. Yeah, but. Mm-hmm. And I was I looked, dressed as a gay cowboy. Yeah. And we both look so cute. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so at Kesha, all can I all can I really say? <laughs> is can I that, really say? All can I really say is it was the most spiritual experience of my life. The yeah. moon was out. It was like uh-huh. oh my god. We were in a bad spot. Like I if didn't I was that a, bad. Well, like we got pushed back between Betty Who because Betty Who was her opener. And then true. when Kesha came on, people like rushed. And yeah. Becca and I weren't like, it wasn't the concert where we were being like, oh, we're going to hold our own. Like, no, I don't really care. Like, I'm just yeah. here to enjoy the vibes. Exactly. Also, so it was, like, I, it was like a GA concert. Mm-hmm. And somewhere I'm super privileged in my life is my height. I am like 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, and so like, I never have a problem seeing people at like a GA thing. Mm-hmm. like it's just that not something good. like I'm just like giraffe vibes like looking over <laughs> the entire crowd and I can yeah. see whatever um but yeah um, and I was wearing my stompers so I was uh-huh. and so you were like I was Don't. set no yeah it was it was like perfect for the moment but like if mm-hmm. you were trying to get a good spot you would not want to be where we were yeah but it was perfect because again the moon was out like I Uh, can't even describe how much it also felt like we were there for like such a long time thinking about it now yeah that was forever we saw the entirety of Betty Who's set yeah and it was like a lot like she did like a full hour before Kesha too yeah she did which honestly good for her I also have to say I think you were in the bathroom but Betty Who did point to me in the crowd oh my god I missed it I have I have a thing of when I go to concerts I try to get the um artists to like acknowledge me yeah (laughs) and so far i have tricked two people into doing it one of them was betty who the other one was lizzo so i'll i'll say that um (laughs) i did get phoebe bridgers and muna so i feel good about that yeah um and so yeah there are a lot of fun videos becca and i were hammered slush we were (laughs) drinking those big white claws which are like they're like forty dollars a can <laughs> oh we didn't think remember when we were like remember when you were like in the morning you were like they never went through we had a- <laughs> yeah I truly believe that I was like yo they're not pending in my PNC they can't be real mm-hmm. but no we definitely got charged and then I got a Venmo request being like it came through <laughs> it came through unfortunately um but yeah it was when she came out and sang praying me and uh, Quinn had a, a moment where we looked uh, at each other and just hugged literally yeah. <laughs> Unpro- we just hugged in the yeah, middle just of the concert knew that, that was the moment it was uh, honestly so incredible so yeah our souls definitely aligned then yeah um, and we've been energetically mm-hmm. compatible ever since and like, then we yeah. had such like it was just such a fun night because afterwards we go across the street to a bar very famous bar in pittsburgh that's very bad with fake IDs, but this is how hammered I am. So I was not of age at this time. Can I even tell this story? Like, am I going to get in trouble for this? Yeah, I, I just don't go really. For it. it's, yeah. it's whatever. So, <laughs> um, I was like so like we were so drunk that um, I was like there's this there's this at the venue we were at. There's a really like huge like bar in Pittsburgh that people love to go to. Um, that's right across from it. And so we were like in line and I knew they were super strict about fakes, but I'm just like, at this point, I'm like, I had a fake ID and I was like, I don't I'm like, what are they going to do? I'm going to get in. <laughs> I, I was really dressed as a cowboy. I'm like, they can't not let me in. Yeah. I, I, I'm not even um, joking. Becca goes in before me is like fine because she actually has like a real ID. Yeah. I give the bouncer my ID doesn't even take a beat. He knows it's fake. <laughs> 
slips it right in his pocket slips it right in his pocket <laughs> and it's like you gotta go and I'm like and then there's also this really weird moment where they're like I didn't I don't know why I didn't think to like turn around like to leave because You're I was like there are there? people I don't want to like I don't want to I don't want to hold up the line. And so I went like past the bouncers and made it look like I was like trespassing. Them. Oh my God. And they like ran to like block me. And I was like, okay. Like I wasn't like, I wasn't making a break for like the bar. Like I was just, yeah. I was just turning myself around. So like, I didn't have to go. And there was like, like the bouncer who didn't reject me was super judgmental about it. I remember him like shaking his head at me. And I'm like, dude, I was like, dude, what's going on? I was wow. like, what even is like, anyway so yeah. anyway victimless crime <laughs> fake ids um Seriously. and so uh then we literally i but it was nice because i literally wasn't even mad because we couldn't be i had another one i'm gonna be <laughs> another one to be honest mm-hmm. and i was like let's get we literally got an uber back to like near where our campuses and we were like so where are we going now and then we went to a mixer for becca's sorority oh my god i literally forgot um, when i was social chair at the oh my time. god becca social chair to dropping her sorority within the course of a semester pipeline <laughs> the pipeline in the course of like two weeks <laughs> crazy an ambitious an ambitious thing um yeah but yeah so that was a I'm fun so night brave. and then we had the drag scene yes which was becca's show she directed and we got very close through that process because, you know, obviously director, ingenue, those are really um, important <laughs> relationships. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. I was Becca's muse. You could say um, that. I you was Becca's muse that. when she cast the drag scene. Um, <laughs> Things like that. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just in my room and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the drag scene was really great. Um, and there were some moments that were tough that I would yeah. say even just made our bond stronger. Yes. But um, and I were just very, I don't think we were like rehash in like a public way. Some of the things that went on, no. at least not at this juncture. Nah, but it was just like, I think Becca and I just had like a mutual, like feeling sorry for each other during the entire process. Yeah. Because we and, were both like so much being tested. Yeah. Oh my god, the whole time. And we had like the exact like every same. day new thing. Yeah. Like we had the same frustrations about the general stuff mm-hmm. and like the annoyances were just like we had to just look at each other and be like, babe, you got this. I'm so yeah. sorry. These are the circumstances. But, but it was nice because we were this. in it together. It was. Like truly mm-hmm. don't know what I would have done without you. So yeah. we were both very grounding. I remember there was this one thing where we were like I like pulled you for a chat like there was like this one like thing that happened mm-hmm. at rehearsal and I was like okay well we need to like talk about it and we like yeah. went in the hallway talked about it and we were like <laughs> at the end you were like can I have a hug <laughs> I was like yes <laughs> you can um yeah and it was just like yeah so that definitely brought us closer together but it was like that show there were times where I was like truly felt like I was on an island because something else about this show and something else that I feel like theater people are like trained to do because we like love attention and that's why like part of the reason we do theater and stuff yeah. like that is like you want to be like the biggest role in the show mm-hmm. and then when you get it it's so tough it's so, so tough I was literally the show was two hours and 15 minutes without the intermission I was on stage two hours and 10 minutes of that yeah like I fully had so much to do in the show and not like not Becca's fault at all, just the way the play was written. Yeah. And it was truly so hard. And I also had you, and I would like to say this, that, you know, I only put you through this because I knew you could do it, Mm -hmm. but you were basically standing and or dancing and or gyrating the entire time. And I'm in, I'm in a full face of makeup, a face mask because we had to wear those, a wig, yeah. um, mm-hmm. a full face of drag makeup. I'll say, <laughs> like my yeah. eyebrows are glued down. <laughs> um, um, I have a bra on with padding in it. I have a waist trainer on. I'm wearing a petticoat that I'm then hooked into because it can't stay up. 
I'm mm-hmm. in a dress. I'm in two pairs of tights and I'm in like a one and a half inch like kitten heel. <laughs> Under one the of which lights. didn't one of which didn't hit, fit my foot i'm still the shoe situation was like a whole it, like this this show taught me that i have two different size feet apparently drastically yeah because apparently. one of the one of the shoes fit like a glove on my foot the other one wouldn't stay on oh my god there's this Why one rehearsal what? where i had this thing where i had like this thing i would like i forget what even point it was at during the show oh i had like a little fit at one point during the show and yeah as like part of the co- like physical comedy one night I like kicked my leg but it was my leg with my loose shoe and it literally my shoe flies off and like hits the set I remembered <laughs> I was like um the shoe <laughs> and by that point we had said like multiple times like okay the shoes don't fit <laughs> and yeah. nothing had been done about it I know literally I was so, like, so at that point they were like and that they're like okay This is dangerous now. (laughs) This has now become dangerous. Oh, yeah. Also, what was a little dangerous about that show was that the set was basically falling apart. Yeah. The technical director of our theater department was um, left his position during that show, whether that was his choice, another person's choice. That's still a mystery to a lot of people but um all we know is that this show was apparently the last straw for (laughs) whoever's decision that was Mm -hmm. and i i get that because it was almost my last straw as well yeah but we made it through we were stronger Mm -hmm. because of it yeah and something that even further spiritually aligned us (laughs) and actually saved us from you guessed it coronavirus was our friendship is powerful our friendship and our bond Mm -hmm. because we have physical proof being the two sole survivors of a cast party for the show mamma mia (laughs) that we were not in but we did co-costume design Mm -hmm. which is very and i produced it i would like to say on the oh yes yes quinn i was a producer on the project and um, I was not. I was just the co-costume designer. But we did mm-hmm. go to the cast party. And I cannot lie to you when everyone got COVID except us. And it's because we sat in a corner all night talking to each other. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and say it, say it. Except for the point in the night where yeah. I took literally something out of the hands of somebody who would test positive for coronavirus like a day later yep people was oh people are yeah are you gonna i mean (laughs) how much do you want to say what are you gonna say i mean okay well (laughs) the thing i took was a bong and i yeah yeah, yeah. i i i I hit said bong Mm -hmm. um and I would also <laughs> I would like yeah. to say I would like to speak on this as a as a person who's I also know, there. I love I love nothing brings me more joy than hearing Becca <laughs> describe this. I also first want to set the scene a little bit from my end, and that was yeah. I was sharing a blunt with three people who later tested positive. <laughs> and, I know this part. <laughs> yeah. And they were all coughing a lot. And I assumed because the the blunt and so I actually looked them in the eyes and this is my intuition at work because I said y'all got Cornova and we all laughed (laughs) a day later (laughs) they all had Cornova so but so tough so so Quinn's on Quinn's on my on my right which is my best side thank you (laughs) and um has just taken the bong out of another positive person and does probably the fattest rip I've ever seen any human being do. Like literally needs CPR after it because you were (laughs) coughing so much. Like you are not okay. I thought you were choking on your actual like throat itself. (laughs) You look at me crying tears down your eyes. Face is red. You go, did I do a lot? Girl. (laughs) Girl, why did you ask me that? You know you did. You know you did. 
You know you did too much. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I can explain to you the situation. Cause yeah. Ooh. Oh my <laughs> As I'm coughing up a lung, Becca's like, you you think you might have done a good amount? <laughs> you <laughs> you think that this was healthy? You think this is good for you? Um, yeah. Yeah. And so after that, I was in my own world for the night. We were um, we were absolutely we in were, our world. Yeah, we were. We just sat on we the couch together. Projecting. Like we were like we yeah. were the the videos and the pictures from that night will like (laughs) oh god yeah also I'd like to like most of the time the photos that were like taken around us like we're just sitting in the exact same positions like (laughs) yes with our arms no literally and one at one point also we both like were obviously super high in our minds and like drifted away from each other we were looking and then we come it's been probably been like it feels like 15 minutes, but it probably was like a minute and a half. And we just look at each other at the exact same time and start absolutely dying laughing because we know that we were just so distracted. We're like, we both had the same thought at the same time. It's like, oh, I haven't talked to anybody in a minute. And if I yeah. don't start, like, <laughs> if I don't realize that there's other people outside of my ex- like own externally, being. I'm going to yeah. go crazy. In I'm going to freak out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it's literally a miracle. Like, I don't understand how you didn't green out. So something, my superpower maybe is that, um, so you know how me is when I feel, I definitely felt like I, like I could have greened out that night, but then I like sense the feeling and I take a deep breath and then I'm good. <laughs> I have to take a step back from the situation and then I'm fine. I literally can't even like my, I don't understand like as someone who has greened out horribly same I, same I can't imagine breathing through it I just like I had the whole experience also of my body going completely cold it's like one of two times where I've like felt my body go completely cold <laughs> oh my god and I was just like it's okay Quinn like you're it's fine wow it was also nice because I didn't have anything to like green out on. What do you mean? Like, because to me, greening out means you like throw up. Oh, so there was just nothing in your body that I would. I don't think I had anything. anything in my body. Like, usually I would be like snacking, but because we were at like a house party, like I didn't have anything to like yeah. munch on. When I, I also want to say for all posterity. Yeah, yeah. I, we stopped. So between the show, because we went to the show that night. Yeah. Um, And then we went, we stopped at our friend Nan's house, producer of our theme song, theme our song. theme music. So the music you hear on this podcast is all the Nan. work of us, of Nan course, Dieter. and Nan. Yeah. Um. So we love Nan. Shout out to her. She's like the, probably going to be the only other person we follow for a while on the pod Instagram. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and so I we stopped at Nan's house. There's like a group of 15 of us there. And I'm like, mm-hmm. guys, what if we just didn't go? You not only did you say that, you were making a case as to why walking up the hill was like not worth it. Yeah. And well, you were right. <laughs> the power of friendship did keep becca and i protected that night yeah and also because, yeah. a lot of marijuana mm-hmm. because yeah our cells were just absolutely coated in weed because there's no there's really no reason why we should have tested negative but we did mm-hmm. we didn't we didn't have covid and i know that because that i got point. it two months later yeah and i still have not tested positive for coronavirus ever so proud of you quinn crazy Love that. Um, but yeah, so that's the story of Becca and I, and we're excited to chronicle the future with this podcast. OMG. Um, and so, yeah. yeah. But we're going to take a cheeky little break and get into Jump Scare of the Week and our Manic Pixie Moments of the Week. Yeah. See you on the flip side. Ah. Uh. Dragon's 
scared. Okay, so we're back. Welcome back. Did you miss us, first of all. Um, but anyway, so Becca, uh, or I guess I should explain. <laughs> we're still new at this. Um, yeah, yeah. You guys are still getting the pace of the show. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's now time for the jump scare of the week. So it's something this week that Becca and I experienced that mm, we're scared. Yeah. And we're going to be scared for a long time because of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so Becca, what is your jump scare of the week? So unfortunately, Quinn, I've talked to you about this before, but mm-hmm. um, this week I did get fully drunk off of two truly lemonades. Fully drunk, like off two of them. Mm-hmm. So that does concrete my fear that I am absolutely alcohol intolerant. <laughs> and I've actually toyed with the thought of like going sober. Oh, from alcohol, because it honestly is just so annoying <laughs> to deal with. Wait, so you're like sloshed off of these two trulies? Yeah. And like, there's no re- like I had a full dinner, a full meal. I was That's everything crazy. else was normal. Yeah. So it's scary. Did me you like get I sick thought. afterwards? I almost did in the morning. I almost puked. That's crazy. Yeah. So I have another friend who's like very alcohol intolerant. It's yeah. I just think my body is like too sick of it. So yeah. It's weird. Scared me. That's crazy. Yeah. I I fear that I have like a stomach of steel. Well, I believe you do because you've you've trained yourself to have one. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, so something about me. I hate throwing up. Yeah. Everyone um, I, I know who has a fear of throwing up like doesn't. I haven't thrown up in almost three years. That's crazy. I'm coming up on my, in July 4th, 2022 will be three years without throwing up. July 4th. If I make years it. Ago. If I make it. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so yeah. Um, Interesting. But yeah, I hate throwing up. And so I don't do it. And sometimes I think that's very unhealthy. There are probably times in my life where I should have thrown up. Since probably then, that yeah. i don't and um yeah wow don't do as i do guys but you know i also i think i realized it was chelsea peretti uh it was um have i told you about this um apparently she has a bit where she talks about you either come from a poop family or a throw up family oh yeah 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 and i very much come from a poop family it's so interesting i definitely come up from a throw up family and so that's also the wide range of perspectives that Becca and I are bringing from <laughs> yeah. this podcast. And so yeah. write in this week and say whether you are from a poop family or a throw-up <laughs> or throw-up family. family. Let I us know. I think it's a. I think it's a really smart thing. No, like, when I you d- hear it, yeah. it makes a ton of sense. No, that makes so much sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, what scared you this week, Quinn? So, I talked about this a little bit earlier in the podcast, but I read a book called Love, Hate, and Clickbait this week because I'm in my bookworm era. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was like, we talked about Heartstopper in the A block of the show. I thought it was gonna be like Heartstopper a little bit. Like there were parts of it that were very Heartstopper. It was just like sweet, like intimacy between like two men and like, you know, it was just like, you know, nice stuff. And like, it gave gave me like the fuzzies reading it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But then, and this is gonna be big spoilers for the book. So if you don't want those, skip ahead a little bit. I can put like a timestamp or something in it um, because like, I feel like books, even though we had the spoiler discussion at the top, I feel like books are like different than TV. Like spoiling For a book. Spoilers? Is, like, yeah. Yeah, it is. Also, this is a very new book. It came out this year. So anyway, I, f- I, don't, I feel like worse about, about spoiling this than some other stuff. But anyway, so I, I'm reading this book and then out of nowhere comes the most explicit like sex scenes I've ever read whoa and so live on the pod we're gonna earn an explicit rating today and I'm gonna (gasps) read something that really like shocked you I had to pause I had to pause oh my god I'm so excited so the characters so basically um the plot is there are these two characters who are working on a political campaign and the person they're working for makes a homophobic gaffe, like the candidate. 
And so they have to pretend like they're dating because they were caught in like a picture that made it look like they were kissing. And they're like, oh, having a gay couple will be good for optics. It's a very funny political satire thing. I'm not doing it justice right now, but. Um, and so they start like this fake relationship and it becomes a little bit more real. And so this is like the first time they like explore each other's bodies, we'll say. So they're like, you know, exploring this whole thing. And so, um, okay, I'll start here. Before long, Clay was swatting Tom's hands away so he could lever himself down Tom's body. He pulled at the button of his pants and yanked down his zipper, then glanced up at Tom, who was red and gulping for breath. Is this okay? Clay asked raggedly. Yes, yeah, yes, Tom said, nodding furiously. Yes. <laughs> Tom's cock was just as mouthwatering as the rest of him, thick and hot and perfect. Clay gave it a few gentle getting-to-know-you strokes, thrilled at Tom's hiss of surprise and pleasure. He breathed hotly over the head and licked out to taste him. Tom groaned, and all at once, Clay was done going slow. He swallowed Tom down as far as he could take him, pressed his palm to Tom's hips, and went for it. Nice. I, t- I tell you <laughs> specifically what threw me was going straight for the word cock. <laughs> there was something so terrifying about that. <laughs> As someone who r- has read a- an obscene amount of fan fiction, I I could see how that would would throw you in what you think is going to be a normal novel. Yeah. But I've read far worse at the age of 13. And in Becca, the dead of night. what do I find out about this author in the acknowledgments, except for that she started by writing fan fiction. So she came up through <laughs> those circles. That's how you got to do and it. Of course, it's a straight woman with a child. In her acknowledgments, she's like, I forget what her child. Oh, Ollie. She's like, Ollie, I hope to God you never read this book. <laughs> I hope to God. <laughs> Oh my a fully God. a straight woman with a husband and a child writing the most erotic gay sex scene. Wow. I've I hope she, read. I really hope she wrote Larry fanfic. That would like only feel right. It's, it's, yeah. it's well, it's well <laughs> within the, the realm of possibility. Could be true. Yeah. So yeah, that like, and it was the word cock specifically. So that like I had to stop. I had to I had to take a I had to take a lap. <laughs> a breather. Yeah. I had to yeah. take a breather. And so wow. yeah, that's my jump scare of the week. That's very crazy. <sighs> so Becca. <sighs> now we come to the manic pixie moment. The manic pixie moment is when you just felt like the main character. Yeah. The manic pixie dream girl, if you will. Becca, what was that moment for you this week? So I'm happy to announce that I am the proud owner of and i've been searching for one for so long a large squishmallow <gasps> oh so, my god a little manta ray yeah right? she's a stingray yes. yeah i named her sweetener yes um, of course after of my course. favorite album of all time i do have a mini one but i've been really wanting a big one and so mm-hmm. i will tell you that the manic pixie of this all is that when i found it in target i audibly gasped <gasps> I started giggling. I I was going <laughs> and I giggled all the way to self checkout and was giggling throughout my entire purchasing of the item and like fully was like, "Oh, I just creepily giggled <laughs> for like a good solid 3 minutes." Mm-hmm. But I definitely was living like main character moment with that in my in my giggling because I was it was just pure happiness radiating from me. But yeah. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. Thank you so much. Quinn, I must ask you, what was your manic pixie moment of the week? My manic pixie moment of the <laughs> week would probably have to have been. me struggling to find something to say (laughs) i have since being home which we're still home from last episode Mm -hmm. i have become like a little bit of a wine mom like something about me a really good way to end the night 
I'm, I become my mother. I've become my mother in another way than I was already my mother. <laughs> um, because I like pouring a little glass of red wine and like watching a program. Mm, program there's nothing. Not the program. <laughs> a program. There's nothing better. There's nothing better than it. You can't beat it. You can't possibly. Like, it's just such a nice little, like, it's the nightcap. Like, like the other night I was watching, I had like a glass of red wine. I watched Disclosure, which is a documentary about like trans representation in media. Mm-hmm. And then I watched a documentary on um, like the rise and like times of Harvey Milk, um, which was both of which were like pretty intense documentaries. And I'm just like sitting there on my couch with like a glass of wine. Like, yeah. Quinn, I have to say I'm so yeah. jealous. As uh-huh. someone who recently, uh, a couple minutes ago, said they were alcohol intolerant, yeah. I am finding this to be a little bit of a slap in the face. We're going in. <laughs> I know. I didn't realize that because I literally, I came up, if you couldn't tell, listeners, I came up with the manic pixie moment pretty, like, off the cuff. pretty off the cuff, off the, but off the dome. It's okay. I am really happy for you. And I'm glad that at least if it's not me, it has to be you. So yeah. I'm glad you're living thing. that. I'm a, I'm a red wine girly that my mother raised me to be um and it's a beautiful thing in my life it it truly makes me also feel like an adult if there's one area in my life in which I truly feel like I'm an adult it's the fact that I enjoy a glass of red wine yeah the consuming of wine the first time I ordered like a glass of red wine at a restaurant I was like I will do it and it was a restaurant where like I could have ordered like a cocktail like something like fun and fruity and I was like you know what you know what for me tonight it's a glass of red. Give me the red. Yeah. Give me the red. Give me the Cabernet. Please. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, yeah, Becca, we've done it again. Again? again. Oh, my God. That was again. weird. Again, we have done it. Um, <laughs> whether you like it or not. Um, <laughs> yeah, we will do this against your will. Yeah. It, it's not a choice for you guys. I mean, it's a choice whether you listen or not. But is it? But is it's it? Really. Um, so, Becca, where can people find you if they are so inclined? I'm at Becca Hobart on Instagram, at Where Y'all Going During World War Three on TikTok, and at Bex Gloss on Twitter. Quinn, where can the listeners find you? I am at Quinn P. Murphy on both Instagram and TikTok, and at Quinny P123 on Twitter. And I'm also hopefully haunting your dreams. <gasps> Yay! I hope so too. <laughs> and of course, as always, we are Manic Pixie um, Jump Scare on TikTok and Instagram mm-hmm. and soon Twitter. Yes. And also, please, please, please email in Manic Pixie Jump Scare at nice. gmail.com. Nice. This the is emails. where the amount of emails they're piling up. We the have volume. politicians in our, we have a lot of uh, big, hey, big things soon. Big things, <laughs> guys. Guys, we so we can't talk about it yet, but we just have like like there's so much we're working on like behind the scenes. Big things. Big things. No, like we literally can't say, but like just like just like think. Yeah. Like and just know. Think like the biggest thing and then go bigger. Yeah, yeah. And that's the jump scare of it all. Yeah. And so we are here to say. <laughs> We're, We're Quinn. <laughs> oh no, we messed it up. Okay. Okay, ready? We're, We're Quinn. Quinn. <laughs> and, and we're Becca. Becca. And thank and you for listening. For listening. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Manic Pixie Jump Scare is hosted by Quinn Murphy and Becca Hobart. Executive produced by Quinn Murphy and Becca Hobart. Sound and video editing by Quinn Murphy. Social media management and highlights by Becca Hobart. And our theme song was written by Quinn Murphy, Becca Hobart, and Nandita Mahesh.